Podcast. Business casual conversation laced with pearls of wisdom. Casual, authentic, unscripted dialogue about life, work, and entrepreneurship with the perfect blend of laughter and seriousness. Pull up a chair, kick back, and lean in as we welcome your hosts, Michelle Ross and Brian Swanson. Well, hello, we are Denim and Pearls. My name is Michelle Moross. And I'm Brian Swanson. And we are Business Casual. With Pearls of Wisdom. From the porch. And today we have our very first guest. An well, actual guest. A real guest, but not really a guest because you've heard his voice before. Oh. Now, his name is Nathan Cook, and he was the introduction voice for our podcast. You Denim just heard. Pearls. Yes. You just heard it. Um, should I do our, um, our let's do the, the, do our sponsor stuff first. Okay. Thank you too much. So much for our sponsors. I build LCO.com right in the middle of the track. A squared promos. You can find that a two promos.com for all your swag needs. Ink 182.com for all your embroidery and screen printing needs. And then we have, uh, embellished butterfly. Dot com. Oh, you're trying to remember all of this, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I can't see. You can't read uh, it? Embellishbutterfly.com for all of the embellishing of your gift things like this stuff. And then we also have era, europeanheels.com forward slash discount forward slash Marcel, who is doing, uh, she's the one who supplies me with all my European cork heels. And next is... Oh. If you want to reach us or you want to be a sponsor or anything like that, Denim and Pearls podcast at Gmail. And of course, check out the new and improved Denim and Pearls Live.com. You can find all of your fun stuff there that you need to get in touch with us and all those other kind of things. And if you want to be a guest on the show, just like Nathan is today, um, go ahead and go to Denim and Pearls Live.com. And right there at the top of the page is registration. And you can get hooked up with us and talk to us before we get on and all those other kind of fun things. So I heard we're having a topic today of something about change. Ch -ch -ch changes. Before we, we, we bring Time our buddy on to here. Make a change. Ch -ch changes. David Bowie. Right? I have no idea. I just got change in my head. Anyways. <laughs> I've got time on my hands too. And we have Nathan Cook coming up. We can talk to him about change in business, life, family, you name it. We're just going to pick his brain today. How about that? I just realized something. What? Even when he's backstage, he's still on microphone. Yes. So if he can, he can talk to us, but we just can't see him. No, yeah, not. well, they can't see him. We can see you. <laughs> we can see you. We can see you making the faces at us and everything. We're learning the program, guys. But you no, know, bring him on so we can see him because he looks rather dapper. Are he, you ready? Is oh. he dressing? Uh, no. Da -na -da -da. <laughs> da -na -na -da. Uh huh. Okay, bring him on. There, there he is. What? Well, Mr. Hello. Nathan Cook. Oh, I was gonna say, you know, before before you said that I was the, the 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 name, the voice behind the intro, I was gonna say, man, that that person that did your intro has a very sexy voice. Uh, I'd like Fabulous. to get to know him better. So, uh, <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, so Fabulous. The most most interesting man in the world. <laughs> ja, so interesting. Can't get enough of the of the man and the and the very sexy voice. By very the way. Sexy uh, voice. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm drinking from my special edition Denim and Pearls uh, tumbler, which if you haven't got yours, uh, that's too bad. They don't have them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a wild and crazy guy. Yeah? He's a wild and crazy guy. This, this guy is a good guy. Oh, my. And, and that's, that's where we lost fun. all of our Russian uh, and, and, and German friends. And German friends. Well, I, I wanted to say though, before we go any further with our nonsense, <laughs> is Nathan was our is our first guest because Nathan was the very first uh, guest host when uh -huh. I had surgery uh, a while back. He guested for me, and here's mm -hmm. the thing: he is still the highest rated show we've ever had when I was gone. Yep, twice. <laughs> so I'm a little annoyed by that, but uh, I'm also flattered at the same time, which means this. Should be well, a great he, oh, I just show. thought of something. Maybe it's not because it's Nathan. Maybe it was just because I was by myself. You I didn't have you. You weren't by yourself. <laughs> it could be that. It we definitely could be that. Alone. We do but not leave him without a handler. <laughs> to prove them oh, wrong, though, always... like now, subscribe below and make sure you get your comments in because we are reading your comments. Yes, we are. And Such Michael, a salesman and, you and are. And Michael wrote, Hans and Franz, we're going to Hans. bump you up. <laughs> Hans and Franz, we're going to bump you up. 
Oh, goodness gracious. So, Denim and Pearls, our title today, um, we really didn't have one. We were talking about changes. And uh, before we got on the air, I was talking to Nathan about all the different changes that happen in our lives and our careers and our lives, like babies and career changes and business altering. And like with us, bringing on guests for now, uh, for three shows a month. Yeah, but we can talk about having babies like a long time ago. So they're all grown up now. He's got new ones. Yeah, new babies. <laughs> I've got new babies. That's true. They're very. So I, yeah, they're I think very at this point, why don't you introduce yourself, Nathan? Because we're doing a really bad job Nathan, at it. Nathan, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? It's oh, really nice. great. Uh, for those of the, you that don't know me, my name is Nathan Cook. Uh, I'm an executive coach. I work with people in business, but also on their personal lives. Uh, truly focusing and helping people understand who they are, which is why I love that Michelle that you said who. Which, by the way, Michelle and I learned, uh, we, we really got to know each other when we started singing Disney classic songs. Don't, no, nope, don't go there. I know you want to. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, it, it's, it's amazing to me how throughout life uh, we do have these changes. And uh, the question really isn't whether you're going to experience changes in life. It's the question of how do you deal with change in your life? Uh, you're either the person that runs and hides and goes, no, never me. It's, it's not going to happen. Or you're the person that slowly goes along with change. Or you're the person that is creating change in your life. And right now, my life is constantly changing. Um, from a brand new studio that still things aren't quite working exactly how they're supposed to. <laughs> and you it's learn how pretty. to fail through that. It's, it's so pretty. Do you like my blue lights? Do you like my I do. Lights? Maybe I do. you like my green lights over here? Oh, uh, I but missed you the green lights. <laughs> oh, it's because I was, I was standing in front of them. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we have so many different changes in life. And I love how you said, you know, uh, Brian, you were talking about how you guys have older babies um, and I have young babies. And it doesn't matter where those babies are. Those babies bring in challenges and opportunities for us uh, to really alter the course of, of how it is that we're going to interact with them uh, as you know, with me and my children, I am the patriarch. I'm the one that has to show them how to do things and what to do and how to think. Um, I, you know, I'm brainwashing them, as many of many of you might <laughs> understand <laughs> if you've ever had kids. Uh, you guys are at this point of uh, I, well, I'm also trying to figure out how to not um, lose them every single day, not putting like marbles in their mouth and you know all those fun That's things. True. things you guys don't. You guys don't have that issue. You guys, you yes, guys have do. to try. And, no, when you guys just. When they get older, they still do things like this. Well, no, no. It's just more they just advanced. do different yeah. things. They just put Tide Pods in their mouth. It's a little different. Um, they just they do crazier things like, hey, mom, I'm going to drive this car with no brakes. The lights say that, that they don't work, but I'm going to still drive it. Okay. I'm going to coast to a stop, mom. Yeah. I'm going to use what my, reverse my parking for. brake to stop my car. Oh, by the way, all the lights on my engine are on and um, uh, they're blinking, but I don't know what that means. So I'm just going to keep driving on the highway until it stops. Well, you know the secret to that, right? Unplug the car. No, you turn the radio up. <laughs> that way you can't hear what's wrong. <laughs> or I'm getting an apartment, but I don't have enough money for rent. Can you cover me eight hundred dollars till I get a roommate? What? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Different so 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 changes in life. Different challenges for the different changes in children <laughs> in life, and it, so all the basically the challenges escalate. So right now yeah. you've got little ones where you have to worry about them putting peas up their nose or lima beans or things up their nose, uh, or you know eating things that are not edible. And as they get older, then they just have their own free choice. And we can't, all the programming we did as children um, has been erased because now they have new challenges that they like to make sure um, our adult brains can mm -hmm. deal with. Yeah, and, well, and what's interesting too is, <laughs> what's interesting too is um, to that <laughs> looking, looking at your children and how they deal with challenges. Because it's, it, it can also be very telling of how you've raised them. Um, the, you know, what, what is that phrase? Wait, no, um, no we, we've got to correct that. That does not have a reflection on how you raise them. Because after a certain point in their lives, they have their own choice of no matter what they do, no matter what you've trained them to do, they do what they want to do. Well, they say that everything that a child learns is all learned prior to the age of three. Yeah. After that, it's all just repetition and environment. And they make their own choices on how they're going to do things. What was that? Nine? Nine. Nine years old. 
Children are sponges until the age of nine years old. So pretty much everything uh, you give them, free. they're just uh, they're just absorbing and absorbing and absorbing it. So after after nine, that's when they start to develop their own. I mean, we see opinions now, uh, but they're still taking in all information. And what I was going to say, it, it goes back to that old phrase that we that we all know is uh, things aren't taught, they're caught. You know, your children are going to catch the things that you do versus do the things you say. And so when I say you start to see your children and, and the lessons that you've taught them over the years, it's not the lessons that you verbally spoke to them. It's the lessons that you taught them physically. How do you show up for life? How, how do you respond to conflict? How do you respond to change in your life? And it really is important for us as, as parents, as friends, as mentors to be able to be that physical representation in the world of who we should be to be a, a, a brighter light, to be a positive change. Well, I know I, I, I am totally with you on all of that. And I see where that all comes in because it's our actions, not our words. Mm -hmm. However, I can remember back to my time frame when words, <laughs> I hate to say this phrase, but words mattered. Okay. Um, there was a time when I was in high school that I wanted, I was a big time clarinet player in the band. I was first and second chair and all this kind of stuff. And I wanted a new clarinet so that I could carry my career on and take that career and probably go into the Air Force, and join the Air Force band and be successful that way. Well, mom and dad said, no, we can't afford it. Well, that was upsetting, but to me it was upsetting, but it was something I could get over until the day that they went out and bought a new waterbed. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the 1980s, you got to figure. They went out and bought a new waterbed. Well, they could afford the waterbed, which was the same price as the clarinet, but they couldn't afford the clarinet. So those words to me mattered. Yeah, because it's mm -hmm. priority, their priority versus your priority. Right. It, was, it really was the, their priority and stuff like that. And we could probably psychoanalyze all that and put me on a couch and how it destroyed my life and everything else. No, 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 but... no. We don't do that. <laughs> We don't do that. <laughs> we don't go there. But I also, you know, I also think that we learn from a lot of those things. In fact, I just had a conversation or a presentation the other day talking about nature and nurture. And that nature stuff is that stuff, that environmental factors that we have. And those environmental factors really, really impact us. So sometimes I think it's words. A good portion of the times is the actions that you're talking about. Be seen, not heard. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, I, we could come up with all kinds of nice little. Well, that's why actions are so that. important. I mean, we've done it. Uh, well, no, like Nathan and I have been in uh, sessions. Let's say at the John Maxwell team group, whatever. Well, we do. He'll say, um, "Pat your stomach," and everyone will be tapping their head. Mm -hmm. And he said, "I said tap your stomach," and then he'll say, "Okay, oh, now tap your head," and he'll rub his belly, and you're, and everyone will be rubbing their belly. It didn't <laughs> yeah. matter what he said; we did what he did. Right. Not yeah. what he said. Right. It's human nature. Yeah. 100%. It is. It's human nature to follow. And I love what you said about environmental factors, because environmental factors do play a huge part in life, which is uh, truly one of the things that uh, I've been focusing on personally in my own life. But I've also been focusing on with my clients in terms of what it, what do you control in your environment in order to create change? You know, in, in my world, um, we have tons of clothes in our house. I've got lots of clothes. My wife has lots of clothes and um, we can't seem to find places to put the clothes. I don't know if you've run into this issue before in your life. It's called but Goodwill. It, it, yes, it is called Goodwill. And Goodwill uh, uh, or Salvation Army, which is another great one, um, it, it is extremely difficult to get rid of things because we have an emotional attachment to things in our life. But here's a really interesting thing that I've really been working with clients on and playing around with my own life is that if you don't declutter your life, if you don't take things out of your life, you don't have room to bring in something new. You don't allow change in your life because you don't have the room or the capacity to allow change to come in. And so it really is important for my, myself to look at the environment that I have, like the clothes piece. Like I took a huge garbage bag full of clothes and I sent them down to my nephews uh, and they're going to be reusing those clothes. So they're going to get another purpose, but there's emotional attachments that I have to specific things that I gave away and I'm releasing those pieces so I can allow change in my life 
to really welcome it in, right? It's not that we make things happen in our life, we make them welcome. So how do we welcome change in our life? Well, then that's a good question to segue back into what we should be talking about in business <laughs> is what do you give up in your business in order to segue to the next level of business? And we'll talk about that right after our commercial. Okay, we'll go to commercial. We'll be right back. Contractors, do you need better cash flow, quality leads, better projects? Rise above your competition by proving you do better work. Make a solid first impression with strong reviews. Establish your credibility by showcasing your skills. Extend your reach so you can land better jobs with better clients. iBuild SEO will set you up for success with your search engine optimization, website development, social media marketing, content marketing, reputation management, review request system, with the power of more, utilizing the construction contractor's digital dominance method. Book your time to speak with us today at iBuildSEO.com and click on the Get Started Now button. And we're back. My name is Michelle Moross. And I'm Brian Swanson. We're Denim and Pearls. We're Business Casual. With Pearls of Wisdom. From the porch. From the porch. And it today we've been talking with Nathan Cook of Nathan Cook Coaching. And we were just starting a conversation about what are we releasing in our business in order to allow the next level of our business to come in. So welcome back, Nathan. Well, wait a minute. That's not bringing back quite what? yet. Let's, let's remember, make sure everybody likes and shares. They all got to like and share what we're doing. Okay. So we got, we got that in. And then, of course, check out our new website. Which is? DenimandPearlsLive.com. DenimandPearls.live. No. DenimandPearlsLive.com. <laughs> there you go. That's more like it. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, let's bring Nathan back in and see what he's got to say about all of this. So, what are we what are we releasing? In order We're to now be back with DenimandPearlsLive.com. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a really great question. So we, so I was kind of getting into this on, on a personal level, but uh, the business level is just as important as the business level. Uh, it, it, when it comes to releasing things, what are we releasing in our business to be able to grow and expand to that next level? Um, well, well, the reason I was bringing that up is because one of the things I was just talking to you about is I had to release my social media to someone else. Mm -hmm. I gave it up to someone else so that I could focus on the other things that are growing in my business. Yeah. So something as simple as I'm not playing on Facebook, someone else is going to play on Facebook for me. That kind of thing. How but, can you give yeah. up Facebook? <laughs> well, I mean, and that's that's a, really, an that's a really great point. Um, you know, a, a lot of the things a lot I've been going back through Atomic Habits lately. Um, and one of the things that he talks about is creating an environment that actually will allow you to be productive. And being productive at work, what are the things that cause you or distract your attention from actually completing work? Um, that's a really great way to look at environment and, and specifically is the environment that you're in, is that conducive to you growing to that next place that you need to be? Do you need to remove some things from your office? Do you need to remove some distractions from there? Um, you know, <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> I don't know why I had a feeling that was going to happen. But, I'm know, only Michelle, here for an hour. <laughs> Michelle and I were even talking about this too because my time is so limited. My capacity is just, it, it's its small right now because of all the things that I'm working on uh, in my life. And so I'm really busy. And so uh, for myself, I have to start releasing specific clients, specific levels of clients in order to continue to meet the financial needs and the financial wants that I have in life. And so there's those pieces in life when you're when you are looking at your business, you have to release some things in order to get to that next level. Like what Michelle was talking about, social media. Like I like social media. I think we would all probably say that we like social media to a point. But do we need to be doing social media? We we actually need to hire someone and release social media. This last year, uh, instead of doing all the tax stuff myself, uh, I'm releasing that. And so we all need to look at areas that we need to release um, so that we can actually welcome more opportunity, more opportunity to whether that's making money or creating more contacts, having a, a greater reach and influence. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I, I, I think one of the big things, especially now since COVID and all that kind of stuff, a lot of us are working from home. Within our homes are lots of lots of distractions, whether it's the kids running around, the dog needs to be let out whether it's social media, whether it's the fact that, oh, I need to do the checkbook or run to the grocery store, whatever, we've, 
we see these things and these things are taking over a lot of our time when we could be more productive. So yeah. people yeah. like you, Nathan, at least as far as I can tell, you're a little bit more um, structure wise, a little more dedicated, a little bit of um, self. What's the word I'm looking for? Self-control. Self-control. Yes. Yeah, Self-control. That is a good one too. <laughs> you know, so looking at it from that perspective, a lot of us have changed to the fact that we still, we have all of these distractions that are in life because we're not going, you know, 35 miles to the office downtown anymore. Well, and, mm -hmm. and that's why, that's why um, prioritizing what you're good at and what you're not good at. We've talked about this before we do a, a SWOT analysis, know your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And basically you what you do is you've time. got to pull things that are weakening your, your presence. And so with me, I know if I get on social media, especially TikTok, I get lost for hours. And so <laughs> I know my strength is in front of people, connecting with people and moving forward. And so if I drop these other things and give it to people who are very good at being focused while they're on social media, put my posts up that need to be done on time when they need to be done, I can focus on connecting with the people, not dealing with the statistics and the, and the numbers. And yeah. When it, he was talking about, you know, organizing our lives from the inside out, you, life is so distracted at home. I mean, I introduced you to that ULA app just to keep us in tune with working out every day and eating right. It's, it's, it's just a digital checklist of what you need to get done. And it mm -hmm. counts you when you gives you points, it gives you goodies for when you do good jobs, you know, good job. Gold stars. Drink your water today. <laughs> you know, those kind of things, because we get so lost in the shuffle of every day that sometimes we need something else to take that distraction away so we can focus stronger on what we really need to do in our business. And I know we're, we've started in business, but I know you wanted to go more into the personal life of changing and, and shifting. Would yeah. you like to go straight into that where, you, where we stopped you from going from earlier? No, 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 you didn't stop me at all. You know what I love that you said though, is focus is a key uh, to success in every aspect of your life. Um, we've talked about this before just behind the camera, Michelle, is the duality of the mind is that you can only focus on one thing. You know, you can't have two competing thoughts. Uh, both of those thoughts can't exist in the same plane of reality. And so you choose one over the other. And so when it comes to this idea of focus, whatever you focus on is going to grow in your life. Whatever you focus on is going to be the dominant nature in your life. And so when it comes to like just around our, our day-to-day -day lives, what do you focus on? I love that, you know, Brian is like, you're very organized and every, you, it seems like this. And um, I could be wrong, maybe. You might be wrong. <laughs> I, but I, was, I haven't always been like this. But what happened was I got really focused and I, and I became focused on what it was that I wanted, which was to add value to people, to allow them to come to a new understanding of how they could grow, how they could develop. Um, you know, I used to say the phrase, growing your awareness. That's kind of my goal in every interaction is to grow your awareness. Um, and if I haven't done that through an interaction, then I haven't lived up to my life purpose, meaning I haven't shown up in the capacity that I want to show up. And that's really where the personal life comes in is, I mean, our personal life seeps into everything, whether that's business, whether that's our friendships, our, our, our personal life truly does... Uh, it accounts for a large portion of our life. And if we don't focus on the things that are important in our personal life, if we don't allow space in our personal life to grow, then we're not going to see the things that we want. Okay. I'm because we go, always go different directions on denim and pearls. I have a question that you just, yeah. you just spoke of. How well are you or how good are you at separating business and personal? Because a lot of times, I mean, it used to be when we had jobs, okay, mm -hmm. we went to work, we came home. It was, to me, it was really always really easy to, to separate work from home. Yeah. But now that we're home all the time, or if you're an entrepreneur, you're constantly in both realms at the same time. So how do you look at that? Is there a way to separate that? How do you do it maybe? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's a great question. And for me, I have... I've had to grow into my ability to separate personal and professional because there right. should be there should be some separation with that because you can only serve clients as a professional, as an expert in your field. 
you know, uh, as much as I love uh, certain people in different fields, like I, I'm probably not going to use the realtor that's my best friend. I know him really well inside and out. I'm probably not going to use him because I know him inside and out. <laughs> if you know yeah. what I mean. On the other well, hand, that depends on uh, a realtor, I suppose. <laughs> they, I have I have clients that are realtors right now, and I would completely use them 100 because I see them as professionals, even even though. I do hear a lot of their personal pieces that are going on in their life. I see them as professionals. I work with them as professionals. And so that relationship is professional. And, and I think one of the really good ways to look at this is as professional, it is our duty, it is our purpose to serve the other person and to not want something back. It's, it's to right. serve. And there's an exchange of, uh, of monetary amount for that service. When it comes to someone in your personal life, there's an ebb and flow. It's right. I'm I'm giving to you and you're giving to me. Michelle and I, when we talk, it's I give to her and she gives to me. It's it's this reciprocal piece. That is the exchange between the two of us. When, when it's a professional realm, yes, I'm doing a little bit of exchange of that, but I'm I'm doing more of the financial exchange to give my best to them. Uh, and and that's kind of the way that I've separated the two. Okay. Uh, Justin over on uh, YouTube actually asked a question. What do you focus on and at what time from a day-to-day -day perspective, segmenting time for specific actions seems to be the only way he ever gets things done. That yeah, gets them true. in. Well, I, I mean, is, this, is, is what we're talking about nothing but a matter of uh, time, manage time, time management? Time management? Yes. Uh, yeah, def I would definitely say prioritization, uh, mainly because I I've never met anyone that can stop, start, or rewind time. So management of time really isn't, to me, it's, it's not a concept that works in my mind. Maybe it does for some people, completely fine. But priority management is is huge. And, and exactly what Justin's talking about here is that you have to manage your priorities in life. And you have to, like for me, exa for, for example, uh, there is a time in the morning around 4.30 in the morning that I'm up and I'm reading and I'm writing. Now I'm not writing, I'm not writing like, uh, you know, my hopes and dreams and all these different things for the day. That's, that's not what I'm doing. I'm, I'm writing specifically of where I want to direct my attention for the day. And it's very specific. It's very directed. Now that's early in the morning. If you fast forward to the evening one of the things that's marked in my calendar is I sit and I reflect in bed with a pen, with something to write with. I, I'm not doing screen time. I'm putting my phone away and I'm writing down my experiences throughout the day and how what I wrote earlier matches with what I am, what I'm reflecting on. And now I'm putting an end cap on the end of my day and a starting cap on the front of my day. And here's why this is really important and why this goes to what Justin's talking about is that if you do not schedule, if you do not create margin in your life with time that you are going to set aside this particular hour, or this particular time of the day, if you don't do that, it's not going to happen. In fact, many of my clients within the last few weeks, we've talked about uh, this concept of whatever you give uh, an action item or something that you have to do time-wise, it will be fulfilled in that time. I don't know if, I'm sure Michelle's never had this happen, but Brian, I know we have. Uh, <laughs> we wake up in the morning and sometimes we might spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes in the shower and we have 15 or 20 minutes in the shower. It just fills up the space. There are other moments where we roll over and go, oh no, I gotta go. And then we jump out, <laughs> we jump in the shower, we do our thing, we still get everything done and we still get out the door and somehow we still get there on time and not smelling like trash. <laughs> Why is it that happens, right? That, that, that's, I don't know, that's but I can't get up at 4.30 in the morning. But see, my husband, happen. when I, when I talk about time management, I talk about knowing what I do fast and the things I don't do fast also. I, I prioritize them by, uh, tasks that I know I will complete without even thinking. So I get those done before I go to the ones that take me longer times. So yes, I do prioritize, I do have time management, but I do it in order of how fast I can complete which task. And then I put them in order. Yeah, Justin, and what, and Justin, going to what Justin was talking about, uh, I'll, I'll say this, this is, it's a law. This is a law in life. It's called, uh, it's called Parkinson's law. 
Parkinson's law is that whatever time you allot for an activity, that activity will fill that space. So if you're giving yourself five hours to reflect in the evening, guess how much time it's going to cost you? It's going to take five, five hours. hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> Which is but a good transition thing. to the other thing that J Justin just said, too. And I, yeah. I've kind of become a believer in this one also. Um, just click show. There we go. The end of the day thoughts also seem to have an impact on my dreams and falling asleep thoughts. I... I don't know what it is, but it probably for the last 10 years, 15 years, I was always told that you learn a lot of stuff into your, in your sleep time, yeah. that you put a lot of subconscious kind but, of things going on. That's why you do the end of day thoughts. Right. You, you process them before you sleep. Right. And I, I, I discover that I come up with answers to a lot of things. Sometimes I wish I remembered the answer. That's why you have no problems to your bed. <laughs> but wait, you know, you get that, that thought of, I know how to solve that problem because you thought mm -hmm. about it before you went to sleep. Your brain is an amazing thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's how uh, Nathan and I met. We met at the, the Paul Sheen retreat mm -hmm. and it was ultimate all about retreat. Yeah. the ultimate you about how your mind is constantly evolving and constantly fixing and constantly solving and yeah. it's for us to get out of our own way to allow it to solve the reason why we can't sleep at night and we have those thoughts pondering is because our our conscious thoughts are fighting against the unconscious thoughts and the unconscious thoughts are the correct ones. <laughs> yes. Well, and here's the other thing is that the, the, it also happens this way is we're not willing to release those thoughts because we're afraid we're going to miss something. We, 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 we have this hyper focus on it. And what you have to understand of what Brian's talking about and from my understanding of this is when we, when we go to sleep, when we have our dreams in life, at the end of the day, this is the time where we start compartmentalizing everything that we've experienced. You know, the human brain, if, if I remember correctly, two, two billion bits of information per second that we, that we, that we absorb unconsciously. Billion. 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 With a B. <laughs> With a B. Um, and here's, the, here's right. the other thing. Consciously, 50. 50 bits of information per second. So, so you look at the two of these and you, you take your entire day, all the sensory pieces that you, that you experience throughout your day. When you go to sleep, your brain is compartmentalizing. It's like the Amazon factory, right? They're, they're taking all the packages. They're putting them over here. They're categorizing. Oh, that goes over here. This goes to Jill. Oh, oh, this was all about Michelle. I had time with Michelle today. I've got to put this over with Michelle so I can remember this later when I'm talking to Michelle. And all of a sudden, we're starting to put things away in our memory. Like, like Michelle said, our minds are absolutely amazing in how they work. That and here's the thing is when we're going to sleep, when we're in those dream states, it's funny because uh, you know, we always think dreams last forever. Dreams literally are like that. Millisecond. When you're dreaming, it's millisecond. And, I, it, it, and it's kind of funny when you think about it because... Um, you know, you, you say, I woke up in the middle of a dream. It was it was like two minutes later or, or you know, it was 30 minutes before I was supposed to wake up. And it's like, no, 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 no. You did know, I like, live or boom, did I not? There's there's the dream. <laughs> boom. And 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 it's it's really interesting to kind of think about this is that at the end of the day, it is so important for us to be able to com compartmentalize. And compartmentalizing meaning you have to be able to let it go and you have to allow your brain to sort through the information and to put it in the places where it's going to serve you best. I'm chuckling because I'm waiting on her to go, let it go. <laughs> let, let it, it go. go. <laughs> Don't, Don't hold me back, back anymore. anymore. <laughs> I wrote a speech on that once before, before uh, let it go. Uh, Frozen came out and then Frozen came out like six months later. And then everyone just kept going up to me going, Nathan, just let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> I was, like, I I was gonna that. say, did I you hate this movie now. Copyright? It stole my talk. <laughs> did, did you file for copyright? <laughs> I should have. I should have. Back to it is sometimes we have to let things go so that we can get to the next level we want. And that's yeah. really the bottom line. If you hoard on to everything you have and you don't want to let things go, you never allow space for what really needs to come. Uh, I, I've said this before, like with my health journeys and things where I've lost people in my life or I've lost jobs or whatever. And I, at the time, I was tragically broken that I lost these people. I lost this job. I lost, I lost, I lost. But when I look around and realize all the things I gained because of those losses, I'm a better person for it. So whatever you're going through right now, whatever you're experiencing in your business life, pleasure, pleasure whatever you're doing, hmm? if you've lost something, 
look around because something better has just replaced it and you just haven't recognized it That's yet. the old one door opens while the other one closes? Yes. Or one, however that goes. One closes and the other door opens. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. I think we're close to the end of our time here, Nathan. Uh, let's wrap this up with the fact of how can we find you? Who are you? And all those other kind of fun things. Well, we, had it, we had it running, but <laughs> I know it's going to be more good. than just the website. So yeah, it's, just, it's Nathan Cook Coaching. Com. Yeah, www.nathancookcoaching.com. That's a great way to reach out to me. Or you can uh, send me a personalized email if you'd like at Nathan uh, at NathanCook.net, N-E-T dot net, not dot com. That's another guy. We won't talk about him. He's kind of like, don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> don't talk about that guy. Uh, no. <laughs> but Goodness yeah, I... Uh, yeah, you know, right now uh, I have a I have a couple of different uh, coaching slots that I have I've just opened up, which is really exciting. Three slots in, in my schedule, so I'm really excited about that. Um, really taking on serious clients that want change, that are are ready to go to the next level, and and that sounds really cheesy, right? Going to the next level. Here's what I mean by going to the next level. Um, I'm wanting to work with people to help them understand just how great they can be if they surrender. Uh, all of these things that they're holding on to, meaning all the things that they're like, oh, I'm, I got to be this and I got to be that and I got to be this. And it's, it's none of that. What it is, is who do you need to be today to be closer to that person that you want to be in 10 years from now, in five years from now? Um, you know, when I look back on my life and my journey, I don't want to go, man, I wish I was a better dad. No, I, I want to look forward and say, man, I am that dad today. I can bring that dad into the present right now and say, you know what? I want to love my kids. I'm not going to get frustrated with them when they get peanut butter everywhere in their hair or, you know, whatever it is. And, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's the best way to reach out to me uh, is either through my website or, or shooting me an email at Nathan at NathanCook.net. Um, okay. Are you only looking for people around the Portland area or are you good across the country? He's good across the world. Uh, across the global. world. Yeah. yeah, I've got Global, I've okay. got a couple clients in in other countries, which is great. Um, yeah, I'm I'm all over the place, and if you hadn't noticed, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning here, uh, <laughs> which means it's it's sometime somewhere else. Uh, probably, as Brian would say, it's five o'clock somewhere. Um, <laughs> That's for a whole other reason. <laughs> That's for a whole other reason. It all comes back to what are you ready to release, and do you need a coach? I can guide you through, as I can say many, many times, and I've said it many times, Nathan is one of the many, 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 many few, that makes no sense. The many few? The many few that I actually go to. I mean, I know a lot of coaches, but he's the one I go to first. So if you need a guide that will help you through letting go of your, whatever you want to hold on to, and, and then help you to allow you to open the next door, I, I highly suggest Nathan Cook. The, the man is a brilliant brilliant man. And uh, he's helped me through so much in my life. And if you watch my social media, you see how fast I'm going. And it's from tips and tips and tips and tips and helps and helps and helps from this man right here. So hey, why don't you Nathan promote Cook. him some more? I will. Reach out to Nathan Cook because it's awesome. <laughs> he is. All right. Well, hey, Nathan, thanks for being here. Thanks for being our first guest. Yeah. Great to, great to be your first guest. You know, the last, the last thing I'll say here um, is I have this phrase that I always say, um, and this will be work great. Uh, Michelle's already ready to go. She's got her glasses on. <laughs> you got yours? Uh, it's, what I, it's what I say to every single client, which is see more, be more, experience more. In your life, see more of what you want, be more of that, and you'll experience more in your life. I like Outstanding. It. All right. Well, we will uh, talk to you offline later on, but otherwise we're going to say good day. You got their glasses stay, up here. Stay on the line, Nathan. We'll be back. <laughs> I've got my monofocal. Awesome. Peace. Are really peace out? Yeah. Next week, make sure you check with us. Hold on. Next week, make sure you check with us on Friday again at noon because our next fabulous guest is going to be Rich Parsons. And Rich Parsons is the owner of your success, success magazine. magazine. And I'm gracing the cover of that magazine right now. Oh, that's right. You are, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. So we'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>